Coach, first off, how much different is this year from last season now that you have a one year of UMD head coaching under your belt? Uh, well, we're clearly more familiar with each other. Um, for me, I only have to get to know the freshmen. I don't have to get to know, you know, 15, 16 players. And then they're familiar with me so that they can help the freshmen out a little bit too and kind of knowing what my expectations are and everything. We don't have to put everything in place. It's already there. Okay. Bulldogs had quite a year during your debut season, making their first NCAA tournament appearance in four years. In addition to finishing just one game out of first place in NCAA standings, NCAC standings, doing so with a school record for conference wins. Did you expect that kind of success right off the bat? Uh, I, honestly, I, didn't, I had hoped it. I didn't really have any expectations. Um, as we went, as we got into conference play, um, in talking to Stan, my assistant, I had said, well, let's, you know, let's just get, let's get in the top 10, let's get into the tournament. And as we got a little bit further into it, I'm like, okay, I started seeing that, you know, we definitely were very competitive and, and that we had the talent. Um, so I'm like, well, let's, let's get in the top six, let's get a bye. And then uh, as we got down the stretch, when, you know, things were starting to go our way, you know, we got some really good breaks. We made some great comebacks on some games. Then that was. Then we were in a position to, you know, finish as well as we did. And, and really, at, at some point, had things fallen our way, we'd have had to get some help. You know, we were, we were close to being on top. So I didn't really have the expectation. I was hopeful. I knew we had talent, but without having been in the NSAC conference before, um, I really didn't know, you know, exactly how we stacked up. Okay, and looking at this year, you returned a half dozen players and started the majority of your games last spring. It includes Becky Smith and Natalie Wright, outfielder Sammy Sadler and Hannah Schmoll, catcher Hannah Block and a designated player in Kaylin Tilton. That kind of experience coming back has to make you feel pretty good about your prospects this spring. Yeah, and don't forget Sam Hartman, the pitcher. Well, position, uh, yeah. excuse me, I was a more position player, but yeah, Sam. Right, was. right. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, they're, they had they had great success last year, and you know they're a little bit more familiar with kind of our system and how we do things. Um, so it's just a matter of them feeling feeling more comfortable, um, us being able to add a few things to kind of what we do and how we do it. And now it's just a matter of you know going out and executing it. You mentioned on the mound you do welcome back to senior and, and, and Sam Hartman, but at the same time you lose the school's all-time victory leader in, in Callie Sadler, who graduated last May. How do you see the pitching situation shaping out this year? I like where we're at. I mean, obviously we're gonna we're gonna miss Kaylee. You know, having having you know a senior with that type of experience and that type of a success, you don't replace it with with anybody really. Um, Sam is in the best shape she's been in. As a senior, I know she's really excited, looking forward to the year. She had a great year last year. Uh, I think she even, you know, got better as the year went on. So we're excited for that. You know, she clearly has to be the leader of our staff. We've got two two freshmen that we're going to lean on. Um, it'll be interesting to see how they how that all plays out. I'm I'm curious myself. I think they have the ability, um, but you know, they don't have the experience. And, and there's and that's you need that experience. We got a tough schedule. And then Val Hoho. Um, who did a great job, you know, mostly in relief for us, um, you know, getting some saves and, and picking up some really, really important innings for us last year. So we anticipate kind of kind of a very a similar role for her as well. Last year, one of your team's trademarks was the aggressiveness on the base pass, to say the least, as your club obliterated, I mean, <laughs> obliterated the previous record for stolen bases. Expect more of the same this spring? Well, we lost a couple um, of big base runners. Uh, Ashley Schill, I think she had 25 stolen bases. Uh, Haley Lundquist, she had, you know, 12 or 13, 14. Um, so I don't think we have quite as much speed this year, but I think we're going to be able to, we're going to make that up by being a little bit more aggressive um, on our leads and hopefully, you know, taking more bases on balls in the dirt and whatnot. We call them go balls. Um, and then I, I also think that we're going to have a little bit more power. We lacked a lot of power production last year, um, and so we, we had to create our own offense, which is what we did with the base running. Um, so I think, I think we'll have more power. I'm hoping we have more power that will make up for maybe a little, you know, like if we steal 100 bases, I'd be really, really happy. Um, but we like to run, and we're aggressive, and we still have pretty good overall team speed. So, um, you know, we'll strive for that.
often overlooked aspect of, 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 of softball is team defense. How did you rate your team defense last year and, and, and looking forward to this year, how do you think that's going to play into that? I thought our team defense was pretty good last year. We were, we were really solid, you know, obviously on the infield, um, third base, shortstop, second base, they get the bulk of the action. You know, we're going to miss Sammy Sat or Sammy uh, Schneider, who was at third. She, I mean, she was solid, solid, solid at third base. Um, we'll have a freshman there this year to start, um, Lauren Oberle. I like, I like what she does. It's a position she hasn't played before, so she has to get familiar with it. You know, we'll have the same tandem up the middle with Hannah Schmoll in center, and then Beck at short, and Nat at second. You know, and, and, if, and you know, we've challenged them to get a little bit better. And if we can do that, um, then you know, then we should be we should be even better defensively. You mentioned the two pitchers and the third baseman. Uh, you, you have a six-member freshman class, which is basically your first recruiting class. Do you, where do you see some of the other three fitting in this year? Uh, well, Jamie Langben um, from Elk River. She's you know, we only have four outfielders, and and they'll get they'll get their bulk of time. Lauren Greeter is the other one. Um, Jamie's looking really good. She's got a strong arm. She's looking good at the plate. So I anticipate her getting um, some innings out in any one of the outfield positions. I mean, she's she's a fantastic outfielder. Um, so hopefully her hitting comes around. Lauren Greeter, you know, she's going to give us some some base running help. She's going to, you know, she's a great outfielder, really aggressive. She can make some plays there. Um, she's kind of a slap hitter right now. So um, that's going to give us another option at the plate. Um, and then the other one that I think I haven't mentioned is Lexi Janigal um, from Northwestern. Um, Lexi, is, uh, Lexi is a strong kid. Um, she's, she can catch, she can play a little bit third, you know, play a little second base maybe. Um, she's a strong hitter. And so where she's going to fit in, you know, maybe in the DH role a little bit, you know, she, obviously she'll have to back up Sparky at the plate. Um, and then, you know, some pinch hitting and, and she's good base or she's a fast base runner. So, um, we'll just, you know, we only have 14 on a roster. So, you know, everybody's going to get their share of playing time. So everybody has to be ready to step up. And finally, the league coaches have defending champion uh, Minnesota State Mankato and the Bulldogs picked to finish 1-2 in the NSIC, just like they did last year. Uh, do you agree with that prognostication and who are some of the other teams you see being in the mix? Yeah, I think, you know, Mankato won it last year. They've got their number one pitcher and, you know, they lost a couple of seniors, but they've got the bulk of their team back. Coley Reese was an All-American pitcher. She's a senior. She's she's phenomenal. She's a, she's a very good pitcher. She's an elite pitcher, so they certainly deserve that. Um, you know, I look for... Augustana to kind of rebound a little bit. I think they were fourth or fifth last year. They're always solid. They hit the ball really well. Winona, um, they kind of, um, you know, down the stretch they lost a little bit, but uh, I think they're going to be tough as well. Um, Bemidji gave us problems all, all last year. They have Yost, the returning pitcher, um, and, and I think she's a solid pitcher. Um, you and I, uh, or excuse me, um, Upper Iowa, um, you know they lost. They lost their number one and two pitchers. So yeah, that's you know. But they have they have the bulk of their team left. So it'll depend on what they do pitching wise. You know if, if they have a freshman that can come in and, and throw some innings for us. And then of course Sioux Falls always hits the ball well. They, I think they have solid pitching staff. You know every, it seems like every every team in our conference has has at least one you know really good pitcher. So uh, and, and they can throw one or both games against you depending on what their situation is. So. You gotta be ready to play every single every single every single day out. That's our goal.